Today, I want to start not with a statement, but with a question. What is this question? Is childlike faith only for children? Or can guys like Will have it, old people? Um, in this farming community, these farmers got together. They were praying for rain, right, because they had a bad season. Uh, and they all went into this barn. This devout man, he took his son. Come on, son, let's go. And they're all sitting there, and the son goes, hey, dad, hey, dad. Yeah, what is it, son? Yeah, wh what are we doing? Well, we're praying to God that he'll send more rain so that our crops will do better. Uh, hey, dad, hey, dad. Uh, what is it, son? And the son looks around, he says, how come nobody brought any umbrellas? Faith like a child, man. We can learn a lot from young people. You know what I'm saying? Remember those lofty dreams you had? Remember those grandiose visions and like those grand plans that you were set out to do when you were young and you were going to conquer the world? It eventually evolved to maybe, maybe it eventually evolved to some excuse of why it wouldn't work, right? When I look, it seems like the older we get, the more we say, uh, that'll take too long, or that's not going to work, uh, that, that's going to cost too much. Or something like that, right? Young people, they don't seem to have as many limitations, right? You showed that crazy video last week, Pastor Brian. And a bunch of people with what freaking signs? What did it say? Free what? Did that disturb anyone? Wave at me if that disturbed you. Nobody? Nobody? I find that hard to believe because I was sitting there, hey, is this right? Is this right? Are they allowed to do this? I would be like, well, what kind of perverts are out there, man? You don't want to just get hugged by anybody. And who's going to just randomly come up and hug a stranger? That'll never work, is what I was thinking. And if I was part of that meeting, Christina, I would have said, don't do that. But that's me. But they did it. And it worked. And it totally opened it up, right? Young people, no limitations. Faith like a child. Can only childish young people have faith like that? If so, then uh, we're all in big trouble because Jesus said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, right? Little children with bold faith, no limits. Uh, I live in a tiny uh, townhouse with a very small backyard, right? My daughter keeps asking me for a horse. What are we going to put a horse in the backyard? He'll stand there. No, no, you don't understand, kid, right? And then she's like, what about a dog? Can we have a dog? Every day for every year, can we have a dog? Can we have a dog? Forget about it. Because secretly, my wife and I, we hate pets, right? They smell. They poo up the place. Their fur goes everywhere. We don't like pets. Uh, we older and wiser parents know what's best for the house. You know what I mean? But then Jesus said this, according to your faith, let it be done to you. I tell you, after a couple of years of her prayer, we're, we're having college service. You guys know what's happening, right? Five o'clock, out of nowhere, we're just minding our own, a, a dog walks through those doors and comes into our sanctuary and just starts walking around like he owns the place. Hey, what's up? Hey. Right? We're like, what is this? Whose dog is this? And one thing led to another, and because our daughter Lisa is so faithful, she is now the proud owner of this. Right, right. According to your faith. Uh, her faith was greater than mine. The Bible says that faith by itself, without actions, is, it's dead. Today I want to talk to you about somebody whose faith demanded something to be done. All right? The Israelites are fighting the Philistines. One is here, one is there. there. Nobody's doing anything. And this is a story about Jonathan. 1 Samuel chapter 14, we're going to go through it verse by verse. 1 Samuel 14, verse 1. One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. That's it. One day. That's just not a special day, not an awesome day, just any old day. Now, I've seen... A lot of people wait for those special occasions, those retreats or like conferences, revival gathering. Oh, I'll get right with the Lord when Heidi Baker comes. 
Well, she's coming next week. Oh, well, then I mean uh, Lou Engel. Right? Christmas. I'll go to church on Christmas or Easter. Or I know, I'll get right with God next TD. Man, God is looking for people who will live for him now. Every day. You don't have to wait for EM retreat to get a vision. Right? Not TD. It's better today. Yeah, yeah. E-G-D, E-G today is the good day to live out our faith, man. Um, he said, come, let's go. Come, let's go. Let's break on through to the other side, to the enemy. This is faith in action right there. Two guys going up against the entire army squadron. Man, you got to have boldness. Boldness, I say. I forgot I'm not talking to college. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, adults. Boldness. Right? Sure, the odds are greatly against them, but God is greater than the odds. Amen? Jonathan knew that with God, numbers, eh, numbers, numbers. He'll say so later, that, right? The very line, numbers, numbers. It's not strength in numbers that matters. It is the strength in your faith in God that makes all the difference. Praise the Lord. He didn't tell his father. Why not? Dude, man. Saul would have totally said, no, it's a suicide mission, son. Don't go, right? The fact is, this older, this wiser Saul had dead faith, right? He put his faith in numbers. He put his faith in numbers. Look at it, verse 2. You could just leave it on the slide, by the way. You don't have to switch back and forth. Uh, Saul was staying on the outskirts under a pomegranate tree. Where was he? Way out there on the outskirts, under a tree, under a tree. With him were 600 men. Maybe that's why Jonathan didn't tell his father. His father's too busy sipping pomegranate juice under a tree, under the tree, way out in the outskirts. I mean, for Israel, there is work to be done, but the word of God is quick to point out that Saul and 600 soldiers were not doing anything about it. Many Christians, man. The army of God. Are we not the army of God? We can so easily fall into the entrapments of comfort, of faithlessness, of hopelessness, despair. Oh, there's only a hundred of us. How are we going to make 9,000 churches? There's there's only a hundred of us. And I like shade. Verse 4, to reach the Philistine outpost, Jonathan had to go down between two rocky cliffs. Anybody saw that movie 300? Wave at me, you saw 300. This is Sparta. Yeah, right, right. That. If you saw 300, you saw the value of two rocky cliffs, right? It's a blessing. That's an awesome thing. It doesn't matter how big the army you're up against is because only a few of them can come at you at a time. God guided Jonathan in such a way where he and his armor could handle this enemy. Praise the Lord. For those who step out in faith, God makes a way. What seems impossible, God makes it possible. And get this. This is crazy. Jonathan only saw this because he stepped out in faith. If he never started out, he would have never seen such a strategic and advantageous locale like this, right? The here and now mission, it is a blessing, but you could never know that unless you have been on it or any mission trip, right? Uh, We go to the senior citizen home. There's a senior citizen home a block down the street. We've taken groups there uh, repeatedly now. I've gone there twice, and uh, every time I talk to these old people that are so disgruntled that, you know, they're ditched by their families, they got nothing going, they literally sit there and watch grass grow. That's like their entertainment. And I said, you got to believe in Jesus. He's the Lord. He, you, the heaven, there's a heaven, and you could go there quick. And they say the same thing. I've talked to so many people. They always say the same thing. Yeah, i got to see it to believe it. That is our natural mind. Seeing is believing. We all grew up like this. But God's way, let me tell you, 
God is always, usually, always, usually, always against our human logic. For God's way, you got to believe it to see it. Believing is seeing. Usually to see the wonders of God, it takes a stepping out in faith. If he would just take that, oh, please, that one, just that one step, you would see that it's better and better and more and more amazing. Everyone went to high school here? Mm, you never know these days. Who thought high school was like the best time of your life? And then you never felt that way before. Hey, who? Nobody? Right? Am I right? They all lie. Everyone thought high school was the best at one point, right? Now, what if you stayed in high school? Oh, I don't know about college. Um, it's so expensive. And what if I don't get in a good one? People will make fun of me. And uh, the loans, what if I get out with so many loans? Say you stepped out in faith and you went to college, and you did, and you got into a good one. Well, what if you stayed there? What if you just stayed in college? Oh, I don't know about that real world, man. It's nice here. I got my frat brothers, you know. Uh, I got my this and that. And the economy's so bad, there aren't any jobs. I'll just keep going to school. But say you stepped out in faith, you graduated, and got a job. Yes. But now, what if you're like Pastor Brian and, uh, I don't know about marriage, you know, and it's just, maybe I shouldn't. And uh, I don't know any other explanation. If you never venture out in faith, you will never see those rocky cliffs, my man. Oh, shoot. I just called marriage rocky cliffs. <laughs> Contextually, Rocky cliffs are good things, remember? It's a blessing, right, 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 right? Uh, husbands, right now, just tell your wife, honey, our marriage is on a rocky cliff. She'll be like, no, 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 it's a good thing, it's a good thing, okay? You know, my wife, uh, she's doing that nursery right now. I thought married life was the best. After I got married, it's the best, it's the best. I thought it was the best and I had made it. Until I had my first child, my son. Whoa, that's the best, David and Esther. And then I thought having one child was the best until I had two children. Wow, look at them relating together. Look at them playing together. Oh. According to Deacon Bobby, three children are better than two. And according to Pastor Shine, three children are better than four. Slowly. May there be no settling in your lives. Amen. Please. There is no now is the best. There is no here is the best. No. Constantly taking steps of faith. Letting God lead you to strategic vantage points in your life. That's the best. Verse 6, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come, let's go. Let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps, perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Perhaps. This tells me right here, Jonathan wasn't sure about anything. He just knew that something needed to be done. Right? That God wanted someone to carry out his will. Who's going to do it around here, people? Pastor Shine, the pastors, the leaders? Saul's right now chilling under a tree, sipping fruit in the shade. Let me ask you another question, people. Are you, are you a Jonathan? Do you still have some Jonathan left in you like you used to in your bold and youthful days? Or have you... Just turned into an old Saul full of reasons why that can't or shouldn't be done. Because nothing can hinder the Lord. I mean, we sing it. Sin revival. We can overcome. Right? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. 
if we believe in it, we would be living it. Faith demands action. I don't know why Christians act like we have the smallest God in the planet. We can fit God into this little cross on our necklace or maybe an earring. And that's where our God is. Our little faith makes God little around here. No, Lord. I mean, Jesus, Jesus, whoo, he was healing. I mean, forget Heidi Baker. He was, he was doing miracles left and right. But in his hometown, where they knew Jesus as a boy, what does this Bible say, Matthew 13? He did not do many miracles there because of their, according to your faith, let it be done to you. I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. God is all-powerful, but his kingdom, yeah, that kingdom that Pastor Brian talked about last week, that zipper can get stuck by our unbelief. And that is no, next slide, apis. Timing, timing, people, work with me. Next slide. God wants to advance his kingdom and speed up that crossfade. I hope you were here last week. But we won't be living it unless we believe in it. And that is why faith is so pleasing to God. We say nothing is impossible. Is that right? Nothing is impossible? Think again, man. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Jonathan was pleasing. He thought God could do anything on any day through anyone, he can accomplish the impossible by many or by few. It doesn't even matter, right? He knew it. It doesn't matter how great the odds because of how great a God. Jonathan must have remembered God's promise, what he wrote to Moses, right, in Leviticus. He said, five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase 10,000. Praise the Lord, the hundred of you. We could chase a 10,000, amen? Hmm, only five amens. That's okay, we'll get 100 first. If God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, why can't he still do it today? Why not through us? Did you know we have technology today that we can message 2 billion people in less than a second? <gasps> they wish they had that back then. What would they have done if they did? What are we doing when we do? Faith. Oh, I love this. Verse 7. This is what we need. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead. I am with you, heart and soul. Yeah. Just because Pastor Shine wants to hear this so badly, let's read it together. All right, ready? Ready? One, two, three. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead. I am with you, heart and soul. Oh, he's crying. This is every pastor's dream, right, <laughs> secretly. Everybody needs these armor bearers, right? Because when you step out in faith, let me tell you, a little, little encouragement goes a long way, man. Sometimes it is the difference between actually going or not for a lot of people, right? So, hey, if you're not in a position of leadership, it's okay. Don't think you're lesser or less important or anything. If you're not going to be a Jonathan, at least be an armor bearer to a Jonathan, right? And if you're going to be an armor bearer, then be a good one. <laughs> Imagine if this armor bearer said, what? Heck no, man. I ain't going with you. That's crazy. That's a suicide mission, man. Uh, okay. What would Jonathan have done then? Pastors, leaders, deacons, even the crazy ones that have bold faith that are like crazy, even those, yeah, they need a little encouragement because, hey, we're only human. All right? All right. Verse 8, Jonathan said, well, come on then. And in the New Living Translation, well, all right then. And in the newer living translation, alrighty then. 
Don't go and buy the newer Living Translation. There's no such thing. Jonathan took encouragement from his armor bearer as confirmation, as one more confirmation from the Lord. And what did they do? We will cross over to them and let them see us. If, if they say to us, wait there until we come to you, we'll stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say to us, come up here, you, come up to us, we will climb up because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hands. A test. Did you know that having faith doesn't mean we act foolishly and rashly, right? I believe I can fly. I believe that's how people die. I think about it every night and day. People jumping off a bridge full of faith. No. Jonathan's test is out of discernment. Discernment. He wasn't 100% sure what would happen. In fact, none of us ever really are. Right? He only knew that someone had to do something. This test was wisdom, not lack of faith. Amen? This was going, but treading carefully, one step at a time, letting God lead them every step of the way. What should we do now, Lord? What do you want to do now? Where should we go next, Lord? That's not lack of faith. That's wisdom. All right, verse 11. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistines. Look, they said, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. It sounds like a line, but actually it's literal, right? One chapter before in chapter 13, it says, When the Israelites saw their situation was critical and their army was hard-pressed, they actually did. They hid in caves, thickets. They hid in rocks. They went into pits. They even went into water cisterns. Some even... Get me out of here. And they swam for it across the river Jordan. Hello. Saul and all the troops with him were quaking in fear. Ah, now we know why Saul and his men weren't moving. Now we know. Fear. Fear the great paralyzer. Fear. F ear. As in the enemy, F with your ear and whisper to you. It's impossible. That's ridiculous. Go across the street and ask Hispanics to come into this room. That's ridiculous. How many times have you guys been halted by fear? Coincidentally, that is the same number of times that God's kingdom has been halted from advancing too. Verse 12, the men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, ha, ha, come up to us and we'll teach you a lesson. Apparently they were Chinese martial artists getting overdubbed. The test passed. Yes, they said, come up to us. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Yes, yes, follow me. God is with us. Let's go do this. What a thrilling sensation that is, man. You cannot get this sensation sitting under a tree, under a tree, in fear. You cannot. Imagine a church where a, where a pastor with bold faith steps out in that faith, and then armor bearers are all around him encouraging him. Yes, we are with you, heart and soul. Right? Imagine that kind of church. And God confirms what they're going to do. That church versus a, a distant pastor, you know, he's just over there, does the minimum stuff. He wants his own comfort. And uh, the armor bearers around, they're kind of chilling out too. They like to chill out. Whoa. What kind of different churches would those be? Let me tell you guys, Pastor Shine is not the kind of pastor who will sit. <laughs> Whoa. But are we the type of church that will climb up after him? He didn't put me up to this, by the way. God did. <laughs> climb up, how? Verse 13. Jonathan climbed up. 
daintily, not wanting to get dirty. He, he would tiptoe up that mountain. Dude, he climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer right behind him. This was no easy climb. They could have easily said, nah, we, you uncircumcised, we will get you. We would come up, but, uh, you know, these rocks are pretty sharp. We would get you guys. But we forgot our ropes. And that's a really high cliff. How'd you guys get up there? I would do this if, go ahead, insert excuse there. I would do this for you, Lord, but, go ahead, insert your excuse there. Let me tell you a truth that's not from the Bible, it's not a verse, but still true, a thing. If something is important to you, you will find a way. If not, you will find every excuse, man. Jonathan used his hands and feet. This is a man on a mission, right? This is a climb. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you guys. I'm, I'm going for it. And look what happens. Look what happens when the church, when people take and put away every excuse and just start going for it. Look what happens, right? Next verse. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. Praise the Lord. It's nice to know someone's got your back. You know what's awesome about getting your back? God does too. God honors faith. Next verse. Verse 15. Panic struck the whole Philistine army. Those in the camp and field, those in the outpost, the raiding parts, and the ground shook. It was a panic. What? Sent by God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us. Thank you, praise team, for being the only ones that know the words to the song. It didn't matter how many enemies there were. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Yes, sure sounded like it. God sees a little act of faith and obedience. Oh, look at them. He is so pleased. And then he takes care of the rest. Praise the Lord, right? Like the Jordan River. You guys, get going. Cross over there. Don't worry. I'll make it stop. <laughs> okay. We'll get going. Well, you said you were going to make it stop. Go. Ooh. Can't you just make it stop and then we'll go? No. <sighs> Whoa. Like the ten lepers. Hey, go to the, the temple. We're not allowed to go. Don't worry. This time when you go, you'll be healed. Can't you just heal me right now? Then I'll go. No. Just start walking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Unclean. Un Too many Walking Dead shows. I don't know what it is. And on their way, they were healed, praise the Lord. That step, right? One of my dramatic encounters was I had this, you know, I was fresh out of college. I was like 23 years old. I was just some young punk kid or something. Sorry, 23-year-old punk kids out there. Um, and I had this awesome job. As a young person, I got this aerospace company, right, Lucas Aerospace, and uh, I was their lone and sole IT guy. I had my own office. I didn't know a thing about a thing, but man, I was styling, and I was all proud of myself. Sitting there in my office, cruising, doing nothing, because in IT, you don't hardly do anything. And all of a sudden, ba bam something hits my head, and I turn around. There's no one there. In my reverence, I hear the voice inside my head, quit your job. 
I must have been a Jonathan spirit back then because right then and there, I got up. No hesitation. Okay. I go to my boss's office. I'm not, I'm not making any of this up. Hey, uh, hey, Bob. Because <laughs> everyone who works is named Bob. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but I have to quit. That's exactly how I said it. And he was like, uh, uh, uh. And I was like, uh, the, the, and he was like, um, the, the, and I was like, um, the, for five minutes, that's what we sounded like. I was as confused as he was. But man, let me get to the end of that story real quick. That company, in two months' time, folded, and it totally went under, and it, it, everything closed down. Everybody got laid off. And what happened to me was, because of that, I got into this other company that was totally rising from the ground up. And because I hooked up with these guys who were high tech, any new thing that came out in the IT world, they got it first. They were like the boom, boom, hey, they were like years ahead of everybody else. And they tacked on a $10,000 raise on top of that. So not only did it increase I was saved this, and I grew in my IT career so much faster just with that one act of obedience that God honored. Praise the Lord. It takes a step of faith sometimes to see the amazing wonders, right? Let's finish this off. 16, Saul's lookouts saw the Philistine army melting away in all directions. All right. Then Saul said to the men who were with him, Muster the forces. Yes. Yes, old Saul's finally, finally going to make a move, Saul. And uh, see who has left us. <laughs> when they did, it was Jonathan and the army bearer who were not there. What? Instead of joining the fight, what is it? He takes attendance. There is a war going on. There's a battle. People are shouting out. And Saul's like, mm, let's see. Uh, Phineas, here. Uh, Ananias, here. Ninus. My anus? Where's my anus? Seriously, where is it, Saul? Where is your anus? The only thing I can think of why Saul is doing this is he's wondering who's stealing my thunder. Hey, I didn't authorize this. Who's trying to steal my glory and get this credit? So sad. Then he does something worse. 18, Saul said to Ahijah, bring the ark of God. What? What for? This is no time to look and act spiritual, man. There is a battle going on right now. Get in there. Saul's all, hey, yeah, bring the ark and uh, we'll just have a little service first. Yeah, let's, let's not just join the fight just yet. Let's sing a little more. Mm, let's sit and listen to God and soak in his presence. Yeah, just bring that ark. Did you know that you could use worship as an excuse to not step out in faith? Did you know that you could use church service as an excuse to not carry out God's will? Believe me, man. I was on a praise team for 20 years straight when I was young. I know how to use church and ministry as an excuse to get out of everything. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't. I'm already on the praise team. Dude, we can make disobeying God look really spiritual. Like when they were bringing the ark to Jerusalem the first time, right? They put that ark on a cart Brand new cart, fresh paint, super expensive cart. Nice, it even had shock absorbers. And it was going, and it was going, and there was trumpets and fanfare, and, dring, dring, and there were thousands of people shouting. David was doing his thing and losing all of his clothes. And God was looking at that, uh-uh. And he struck down people dead because it wasn't right. We could dress it up, make it look fantastic, but if it's not what God wants, 
he won't take it. Saul is asking for the Udim and Thummim stones, right? The priest has it in his breastplate, and he asks God a question. Hey, God, should we engage the battle? White stone, that means yes, and then they go, right? That is what he, Saul is asking for. So verse 19, I hope this makes more sense on that context. While Saul was talking to the priest, the uproar in the Philistine camp increased more and more and more and more. And Saul said to the priest, ah, withdraw your hand. That means, okay, okay, take your hand out. We don't need to pick a stone. Let's go. You could clearly see that the battle was going on. And Saul is sitting there asking, Lord, what should I do? Hello. Withdraw your hand. This is Saul finally, finally realizing, ah, oh, the will of God is for me to defeat my enemy. Come on. Get real. We know the will of God too. Oftentimes we know what God wants, right? We know what needs to be done around here. Church, we got to get our hands out of our pockets too. Amen. I meet a lot of Christians who want to hear God's voice. Ah, if only God would speak to me. There is a war going on already, and God has spoken a lot. Please, engage the fight and join those who are already fighting. Please. You don't need to hear from God about that. Right? For example, he mentioned the Awana thing. Right? I don't know how many times you heard about Awana so far. Let me do it again, man, because I'm the college pastor. And if this group doesn't teach Awana, guess who teaches Awana? Yeah. Unfortunately, it lands on the same night as our Bible study. So you know what happens to our 40, 50 member Friday night Bible study when Awana starts? Boom. Goes down to 10 people. Because now all of us are teaching Awana. Please, from the college pastor's heart, could you engage the battle or think about it? A lot of people will stall with what they know they should do with the age-old line. Our favorite line, oh, you know this line, say it with me. Let me pray about it. Right? That is the number one line of how you get out of stuff. Hey, can you help me out real quick? Uh, let me pray about it. Hey, we're going to go across the street and preach to our neighbors and invite them to our church. Yeah, let me pray about it. That's code for, no, I don't want to do that. Not always. When Pastor Shine says, let me pray about it, he really does pray about it. He's the only one in all the world, though. <laughs> Some people pray things that they don't need to pray. Lord, should I make disciples? Lord, should I forgive my wife or get a divorce? Huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, blackstone. Mm -hmm. uh, another blackstone. Mm -hmm. Blackstone. Ah. Oh. <laughs> White. Oh, thank you, Lord. I knew it. I knew it. Man, we don't need a priest. We don't need to bring no ark. We don't need to ask God a hundred questions. He's clearly answered them already. Last verse. <laughs> what does last verse, verse 20, start with? What word? Then. 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 Then Saul and all his men assembled and went to the battle. Finally. And they found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with swords. Because somebody already did something. All right. Crunch time, self-examination time, reality check time. Who are you? Who are you in this passage? Are you a Saul, outskirt person, under a tree, under a tree, seeking shade, wanting to be comforted, protected because you're afraid, not willing to step out in faith? Is, is that the kind of Christian you are? 
Maybe you're an armor bearer. Okay, you'll go along, but only if somebody else does it first. Hey, that's still pretty good. I'm all right with that. At least you're going along and helping out. But where are Jonathan? Right? The ones with boldness. And not just oldness. Ugh. Our EM, the English ministry. Who are we in this passage? You know, there's that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. But I see a group of old people over there proving that wrong all the time. I've been at this church a while now. And what I've seen, long enough to see that mostly college students are making disciples of the next generation. Mostly junior high and high school students are going to the neighbors, inviting them to the EM service. Childlike faith is not for children and fobs only. I know, I know, I know. The prospect of thousands of churches in the mission field from this from this little group, I know, or hundreds, hundreds of churches. Shoot, maybe even just one or two churches. It seems so daunting, right? But EM members of GMI, let me give you Jonathan's heart in 14.6 again. Come, come, come. Let's go. Let's go over to that outpost. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Say the next line with me. One, two, three. Does anybody believe this still today? I really hope so. Because if no one does around here, we're dead. This is kind of freaked out because uh, it happened a long time ago. But did you know they made a movie about this? Yeah, yeah. Um, in this movie, where Jonathan is played by Kevin Costner, uh, <laughs> watch this next clip. There's a little profanity. You know, they use son of the B word, but, you know, you're all adults. You can handle it. Um, it's, it's for the effect of the movie. But try to remember what Jonathan did, how he stepped out, how the Philistines said, come on over, man, and how one person's initiation launched an entire awesome victory. Okay, here you go. Wow. Is that Tucker's man? Yes, sir, I think it is. How long has it been like this? We just found them this morning, sir. They've been here for two days. That was Saul. These are Saul's soldiers. Is that you, Lieutenant? And there's John. Son of a bitch. Oops. <laughs> hey, boy. You better be covered. I'm not kidding. These boys are shooters. Come on. You want to go? There you go. You went to hospital? It was no good. What's going on here? <laughs> What's going on here? It seems to be the question, all right? See, you could ask the major. And you don't know. He's busy. And he's busy trying to figure out how come the officer's mess run out of peach ass to me. <laughs> and of course, you got the general. He come up to see the show. All he knows is there ain't no show. Which ain't entirely correct, see, because we started blowing up, but they shot her down before we got 10 feet off the ground. Nobody made a run either way. It's been a standoff all damn day. Now the major, he's looking at the general. He's thinking to himself, I better do something. You know what that means? I sure as hell don't want to be the first one across this field. There's 
supposed to be beat up just like us. Hell, everybody knows Tucker's men are tough as cops. So far, the only thing that's been killed out here is three milk and cows. Of course, that's about to change. You know, some of the boys are saying, we ain't gonna fight. Could just settle this whole business with a little high stakes poker. <laughs> Wouldn't that be insane? Don't you tell us sitting in the middle of this field? Drawing cards, huh? What is it, sir? Looks like a suicide. Say none. somebody that will humble themselves enough to believe, believe in him and his word, someone who will take a step of faith that he would honor right back. If you honor him, he will honor you. I really pray that this congregation would be the kind that would be God-honoring. full of faith, not ridiculous, childish faith, but true, childlike faith, faith that would spur us into actions. 